since the internet was more popular in the early 90s, you know about that you can search everything on the internet. If you want to know about the famous writer, you search on the internet. You want to watch a pornography, you search on the internet. But some people search internet for something that more macabre and disturbing. Welcome to r slash morbid reality, a subreddit for human suffering and death. I'm sure you know about the Eiffel Tower. It is a Parisian landmark with a history that includes its construction, radio and telecap station, use and status as a symbol of France. Construction began on January 26, 1887. The tower was initially called the 300 meters tower but was later named after its builder, Gustave Eiffel. The building opened it to the public on May 15, 1889, but what would happen if someone tried to jump from the tower to test how the parachutes work. This is Franz Reichel, and he was an Austro-Hungarian man, born on October 16, 1878, and moved to Paris in 1898. He obtained French nationality in 1909, adopting the first name Francois. One of his sisters may have also come to France and been married to a jeweler there, but newspaper reports differed on the detail of his family life with most reporting that his sister stayed in Vienna, Reichel himself was unmarried. He took an apartment on 3rd floor at 8 rue Gallon near the Avenue de Leopola in 1907. He opened what was to become a successful dressmaking business, catering primarily to Austrian on trip to Paris. From July 1910, Reichel began to develop a parachute suit, a suit that was not much more bulky than what usually worn by an aviator. But with the addition for a few rods of zinc candle pie and a small amount of rubber that allowed it to fall out up to become what Reichel hoped would be a practical and effective parachute. And two years later, he announced to the press that he had finally received permission and would shortly conduct an experiment from the Eiffel Tower to prove the value of his invention. At 8.22 a.m., observed by a crowd of a dirty journalist and curious onlooker, Raiko laid it himself, facing toward the sun on a stool placed on a restaurant table next to the interior guardrail of the tower first deck. A little more than 57 meters above the ground, after adjusting his apparatus with the assistance of his friend and shaking the wind direction by throwing a piece of paper taken from a small book, he placed one foot on a guardrail. Hesitant for about 40 seconds and leap outward. Le Figaro said he was calm and smiling just before jumping his parachute, which had seemed to be only half open, fall around him almost immediately and he fell for a few seconds before striking the frozen soil at the foot of the tower. Le Petit Palisien reported that Raiko right legs and arm were crushed, his skull and spine broken, and that he was breathing from his mouth, nose, and ear. Le Figaro noted 
that his eyes were wide open and dilated. He was already dead by the time uh, Luca rushed to his body. Still, he was taken to the Nakers hospital where he had officially pronounced dead. And then, on the police station in the Rue Emily, before being returned to his home in Rue Calong, Edward Lawland, writing in the summer submitted of Libelation in 2009, mentioned that an autopsy concluded that Ryko had died of a heart attack during his fall. The Reddit user Ban Ban Shah has released a destroyed photo of a prisoner's son. This post was brought. I was stationed in Iraq in 2007, where my battalion was tasked with preparing suspect Iraqi insurgent for court. I found this discarded in an area vacated for a new arrival. It was a Pokanian reminder to me of how people live were affected by war. We will never truly know why the previous owner disposed of this photo. I hope at least the kid in the photo are doing well. This is a photo that Robert Wise took back in 1947. It was titled The Most Beautiful Suicide. It had been compared to the photograph Malcolm Brown of the self immolation of Vietnamese Buddhist monk Thich Quang Duc, who burned himself alive at a busy Saigon Road intersection in 1963. Both are widely regarded as being among the most iconic suicide photographs. Ben Cosgrove of Times praised the photo as technically rich, visually compelling, and downright beautiful, describing her body as resting or napping rather than dead and appearing as if she is daydreaming of her beauty. The woman in the photo was Evelyn McHale, born in Berkeley, California on September 20, 1923, one of nine children born to Helena and Vincent McHale. Her father was a bank examiner who relocated to Washington DC in 1930. Her mother suffered from undiagnosed or untreated depression. This led to a challenging marriage and ultimately a divorce. After graduating from Normandy High School in 1942, McHale joined the Women's Army Club and was stationed in Jefferson City, Missouri. She later moved to Baldwin, New York and was employed as a bookkeeper at a Kitab Engraving Company on Pearl Street. She met her finance, Barry Road, a Lafayette College student, discharged from the United States Army Air Force. On April 13, 1947, McHale took a train from New York to Easton, Pennsylvania to visit Rhodes. The next day, after leaving Rhodes resident, she returned to New York City and went to the Empire State Building, where she jumped from the 86th floor of Silvertali, landing on a parking car. A security car reportedly stood approximately 10 feet from her just before she jumped. Rhodes did not notice any indication of suicide at all before McHale left. Detective Frank Murley found her suicide note in a black pocketbook next to her nearly folded cloth coat at an observation deck hall. The notes read, I don't want anyone in or out of my family to see any part of me. Could you destroy my body, my cremation? I beg of you and my family don't have any service or remembrance for me. My finance asked me to marry him in June. I don't think I would make a good wife for anybody. He is much better off without me. Tell my father, I have too many of my mother's tendency. This is Freddy Gonzalez from Kentucky. He offered employee race to murder romantic rival, 43-year-old Brian Russell, after his girlfriend dumped him from his ex-husband. Russell and his ex-wife were high school sweetheart who were married for 16 years and had two kids together. In 2018, they separated and divorced but maintained that contact to co-parents their children. She began dating Gonzalez in 2020 but broke it off after about 8 months. Gonzalez continued to pine for the woman as she went back and forth between him and Russell. During this time, Gonzalez obsessively stalked the woman. Ultimately, she decided to go back to her ex-husband in mid-December 2020. An enraged Gonzalez told Russell he had a gun and treated to kill him. Gonzalez then concorded a scheme to murder Russell. He offered Xavier Posey $2,000, a pickup truck, and a cafe race to kill Russell. After Posey agreed, Gonzalez gave him the murder weapon. Gonzalez also shows Posey's where Russell lived sketches a map of the victim's home and code the address. Posey shoot Russell's to death at the victim's home. 
A federal judge in Kentucky sentenced Gonzalez to 40 years in prison for orchestrating the murder. And that is the video. I'm sure about that that the sound why so weird because I was quite to be having a snort and a short thought and and I'm sure that that the previous video on r slash morbid reality having uh, positive reviews. So I will do this sequel and the next video I will do it will be an iceberg video and if you like this video please share like and subscribe to the new OM24 and thank yous for watching. See you next time.